packs. A poorly fitted one can physically break you, and a good one can pay for itself quickly and avoided trips to the chiropractor. We're going to cover what you need to know about day packs up next. I'm your host, Evan. Welcome to Hunting Lessons. Thanks for joining me again on Hunting Lessons. Over the past couple episodes, we've been working our way through what you need to know about gear. But I've got a lot more coming up soon that's going to get us out of this basement, so be sure to subscribe. And make sure you hit that notification icon down there so you don't miss what we've got coming up next. It really does help this channel out. Day packs come in all kinds of configurations. The range and functionality and intended purpose is huge. Some are built for shorter frames, some for longer frames, some are designed specifically for women. With that all in mind, just like your boots, the pack that you choose is going to be an incredibly personal decision. So, how can I help you choose your next pack in this video? I'm going to lay out my four conditions that are essential for any good pack. Three of the four are functionality, access, and quality. But even if you have all three of those and your pack doesn't fit you right, you're going to come to hate that pack. Now I wasn't kidding in the intro when I said a good pack will pay for itself and avoided trips to the chiropractor. That was absolutely my experience with my new pack. And I'm going to show you the difference between my current pack and my last pack to explain why. It took me a few packs before I got to what I'm using right now. When I started hunting, it wasn't a big deal to take my army small pack and drop it in my buddy's duck boat or wear it across the field to the turkey blind. It was okay for that, but it was really missing a lot of the features that make for a good hunting pack. I didn't like the pocket configuration or how I had to access the main pocket. And those limitations really stood out when I got to Alberta and started trying to use it to go big game hunting. So when I started deer hunting, I picked up this red pack. I really like the pocket configuration. It had this nifty light that I thought I would like but never used. It had an integrated rifle carrier. It had an internal water bladder. I mean, functionality wise, this pack left my army pack in the dust. But even after covering huge amounts of distance in my life with a pack on, I missed one key bit of the ergonomics and I came to hate hunting with this pack. Without fail, after coming back from a long day of hunting, uh, after covering huge amounts of distance, I would have to go for Cairo, because this pack was murder on my back. So it had a decent hip belt that carried weight well, but it was missing the height adjustments for the shoulder straps, and more important, it had no load lifters. Check out how it sits on my back and pulls down on the shoulders. So after a couple seasons with the pack, I knew it had to be replaced, and this time I did my homework, watched a boatload of YouTube videos, read a lot of pack reviews, and where I could, I went to stores and I tried the packs on. What I landed on was a pack I've come to absolutely love. Fits me perfectly, and after a couple hundred kilometers up and down foothills with fully loaded packs per season, I can vouch for the fact that my current pack has not sent me to Cairo. Now, loading deer solo, I need a better solution for that, but that's an episode for later this fall. I picked up the Alps Outdoors Traverse EPS Hunting Pack. It ranked up there on every list of top packs that I checked out, and I've included the link to it in the video description down below. But what really sold me on it was the adjustability of the anchor points for the shoulder straps. As a tall guy, I really struggle with finding a path that fits me well and does everything that I want. But the adjustability of the shoulder straps on this one means it'll fit pretty well anyone. For comparison, check out the side-by-side -side of my current pack and my last pack. That should give you an appreciation of why I relegated the Redhead pack to my range bag. So let's talk about the other things you want to look for in your pack. Let's talk quality. If you're 5k back from the road, that's a terrible time for the stitching to let go in your pack. So you may want to reconsider using a $20 school bag if that was your plan. I'm not going to tell you what you need to spend on a pack, but if you do some digging, you're going to find the price point sweet spot where you're getting the quality and the functionality that you want. So now let's talk access. 
This is my Deuter pack and I take this one to work every day and I'm really happy with this pack. But this pack replaced one that had an even more extreme curve in the shape of the back. And the issue with that pack is it made it nearly impossible to get in from the top and get anything at the bottom without taking nearly everything out of the main body of the pack. Now, while these packs are great for breathability, and there's a lot of hunting packs of this kind on the market, if this is what you're looking for, just keep in mind that consideration of shape versus the limitation in access. Now access concerns may seem trivial, but trust me, if you spend enough time with a pack with access issues, it'll drive you nuts in a hurry. Finally, if your pack fits you right, you're satisfied with the quality, and there's no access issues that you're not going to be able to live with, it's time to make sure your pack is going to do what you need it to do. In addition to your gear, how's it going to do at hauling quarters? What kind of functionality is designed into it for that? Is your meat hauling system purpose designed in, or is it improvised? In my pack, Alps designed a super smart meat hauling pocket that keeps the added weight of your quarters right against your back, which is a lot easier on your back than strapping the weight further on the outside of your pack. Is there easy access for a water bottle? Or are you looking for your pack to have an internal pocket and an access point for a water bladder? If you're using water bladders, remember that in freezing temperature the hoses ice up real easy. Do you want to have an integrated rain cover? For hauling out meat or antlers, an orange cover certainly isn't a bad thing. Where are you going to stow your spotting scope? How can you strap on a bow? How can you strap on a rifle? How easy is it going to be to access your tripod or shooting stick? Do you want a lot of pockets for ease of organizing and finding your gear? Or are you looking for a more simplified pack in order to save weight? So those are all things you're going to want to consider. No pack is going to work for everyone. I found what works great for me, and I hope I've got you thinking about what will work for you. That's a wrap for today. If you got any ideas for what you'd like to see on future episodes of Hunting Lessons, by all means, drop me a line at contact at huntinglessons.net anytime. I'd love to hear from you and get your feedback. Also, be sure to check us out at huntinglessons.net and follow us on Instagram. Folks, thanks again for joining me on Hunting Lessons. Until next time, keep learning.